Yes, yeah, so the first association of my family, the West Coast uh, Railway, that is the Mount Lyle Company Railway, between uh, Queenstown and uh, Strawn, was in the Depression years in the, uh, in the mid-30s, mid to late-30s. Um, at that particular time, the family had grown to six uh, members, and the last member of the family that was born there was Eddie. And that story in itself was interesting because... Uh, at the time that Mum announced that Eddie was due to arrive, the, uh, there's only one way uh, uh, to get out of Tubukana, and so my Uncle Ern was commissioned to get one of the work trolleys, and Mum sat on the suitcase, and he pumped the trolley with a long arm, pumped the trolley all the way to Straw into the midwife. So it's some ten kilometres, so and that's uh, how he. Eddie was delivered. When Eddie was, when Eddie was born, um, he had one extra finger. Uh, fortunately, it didn't have a, 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 any bone attached to it. So, with the wonders of modern science, they they put a tourniquet around it and tied it with cat gut, and eventually the, uh, the the extra finger disappeared. And Dad was a ganger on the railways, in charge of the works gang, um, and it was his love of horses that led to his demise as the ganger of the railway at Tipukana because um, uh, unaware that Dad a special train was coming through with an inspector on it, but Dad took a toilet break, inverted commas, to go and listen to uh, uh, the house where we lived was nearby to listen to the race. But unfortunately the train came along with the inspector on it. He noticed that Dad wasn't there and uh, as a consequence that led uh, uh, to Dad being sacked. So, and, so Ralph, I find this just so harsh and cruel that you've got uh, here's a, a worker in the depression, mm. six kids, mm. and it's an overtime shift, mm. and he's just stuck there for a bit and he loses his job. That's pretty fierce. Uh, well, you know, I was thinking about this last night. I was thinking, well, what if Dad actually did have a stomach upset, and it was a genuine toilet break? When we when we left uh, when we left. Uh, uh, Tibukana, he went to live in South Rhone, Hampshire, for as a farmer for those years, and and he didn't go to the war uh, because he was a farmer. But anyway, a position came up at Rhinodina in 1949, and Dad made his application. Obviously, intervening years had forgotten about his previous sack. Uh, the uh, and one of the things in Dad's favour was a uh, previous experience, and b that he could bring with him. Uh, uh, at least one or two of the members of the family could be workers as well. Now, Rhinodina was a very small settlement. It had the Ganger's house, which is where we lived, which is quite a substantial house, and they had two co-joined co cottages or houses where the Fettlers lived. And there was also another shack, I remember, where Oscar Triffitt used to live, which was on the top side of the, where the railway went through. The, the job was to maintain the app railway system from, from Halls Creek to Double Barrel. Uh, and, uh, and, but the main uh, reason for Rhinodina existing was, of course, it was where the trains stopped to take on water to feed the, because they were steam trains, to feed the highest them. point. Yes. Yeah, yeah, at the highest point. When I went there, I was age four. Um, because we were seven miles from Queenstown and 14 miles from Straw. But because the outgoing uh, trains, of course, were delivering copper ingots to Strawn in the morning, so there was only morning. There were only morning trains came through, so there was no trains going to Queenstown. The better op educational opportunities were uh, at Queenstown, but of course, uh, and in those days even there was a bus used to go to Queenstown, but there was a goat's track up to the Strawn Road, so that wasn't seen as possibility. So we would get. One of the first trains that come through in the morning, say at half past seven, um, because of the uh, app railway system, you know, which has got a central cog where the engine uh, logs onto those cogs and goes up very slowly and helps to pull levy loads, it's extremely slow. It's also extremely slow going downhill. And so the journey to Straw and would never really take two hundred hours. So we'd get there at half past nine, ten o'clock. At, at Regatta Point, 
Then the, uh, we'd have a taxi that'd take us around to the school. One of the consequences of that was that uh, we missed a lot of the basic subjects in the morning, so it wasn't a good long term. But uh, for us, uh, my memories about the school itself were pretty vague, but the most exciting part of the day for us was after school. We'd be delivered back to Regatta Point, uh, and at Regatta Point there were, at this particular time, several little houses, so we had lots of the Ludbys and the and uh, various people to play with. Uh, the, uh, so when, and one of the things about it, uh, particularly the younger ones, we were often hoping that the train would be delayed to be fairly late because it went past six o'clock. We were then taken over to the, the hotel, which, you know, for a young person that was rather... <laughs> and we, we were fed sandwiches and soup and sandwiches. Now, my older brother, Eddie, didn't think it was much, but I thought it was pretty okay. So, uh, uh, that, that would happen on the Mount Lyle Company would do that. And, and we'd always get home. It would always be dark when we get home, uh, which meant no homework or anything like that. And very get home and have to go to bed. I, I, I don't think we could remember much about the school, but we, the, the train trip was the highlight of the day for us. And, you know, it was some... Um, I can't remember being tired or anything like that, but they were, they were long days. <laughs> So my education was retarded, although actually I could read before I went to school because um, I started school at seven. So uh, it was decided that for the betterment of our education and our futures, you know, uh, Eddie by that time had his job and he was uh, maintaining the, the central uh, cog system, but uh, looking into the future, um, the only, uh, at that stage Strawn still had, went to grade nine but there were only about one or two pupils because at that stage, even in the early 50s, most of the kids were going off to Queenstown on the bus, on the Daly bus, to Murray High School. Uh, and, uh, but as we had no means of getting to Murray High School, the, uh, the sensible thing was us to move. Uh, so, so, Ralph, do you consider yourself a West Coaster? Uh, well, I suppose if you've lived on the West Coast, you always do, that's part of you. Part of your life. It's a, it's a, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, I always remember the comment in the book that you people wrote recently of, of Paul. He said, Paul Soden, he said, the West Coast is in you. Of, of mining towns, I think there's a closeness uh, of social life, and it's not that I participated much in Rosebury and that, but uh, there's a closeness of contact and so on. Um, uh, a heightened sense of all the relationships and stuff that you that you don't have to experience if you live in a big town, if you live in your, your cities and so on. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, you get to know people and, and the whole place more intimately. So.